Hey everybody, what's up? Ismail from CGAlter.com. Here we go, another video of the Ask Ismail video series. Uh, today's question is from Ahmed. And uh, let's read the question. Let's start. I just watched your recent video, which I like. Expert versus generalist, and I like it very much. Thanks, Ahmed. And yes, I also want to be an expert in 3D texturing, lighting, and rendering. In 3D, I want realistic results. I want to just render real look scene, which I don't get. So please guide me where to start from. I'm so confused. I'm using 3D Max, sometimes Autodesk Maya in V-Ray. I have a little bit for you too. Now I asked Ahmed back, I asked you Ahmed, which industry you're working in? You said in the film industry. So the ideas I'm going to give you today are going to be related to the film industry because I've checked your portfolio and I found that uh, there is um, architecture visualization work. So I'm assuming uh, that you're going to start from scratch, right? So the first thing I'm going to talk about is I'm going to tell you that, you know, you need a plan. Think with the end in mind. Now, of course, I'm going to give you some information here on my notes, by the way, in front of me. Um, I prepared today. So um, I'm going to give you some information today related to the question, you know, how do you start? How do you be an expert in the 3D texturing, 3D rendering and, and um, you know, uh, lighting? Um, but you know, you have to do your own research and really start with the end in mind. For example, if you want to be a texturing artist, where are the things, you know, brainstorm, um, where are the things that I have to learn? Where are communities that are uh, focused on texturing or with, where are the communities focusing on lighting, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to brainstorm and have a plan to follow in order to reach out your goal, which is finding a job uh, in those um, departments. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about here is the real names used in the industry. What are the names used in the industry? So you have a texturing artist and uh, usually they do modeling as well. Um, you have a look development artist who's responsible for the shading. We're going to talk about that in a second. And three, we have a uh, lighting artist, lighting and rendering. Okay. And this is actually the department that you asked for. So the real names are just again, texturing artist, look development artist, and a lighting artist. Now let's start with the texturing artist. A texturing artist, uh, usually they do modeling as well. So they come with the modeling. So if you go into search for texturing artist job, you're going to find that the majority of the VFX boutiques or the VFX studios are looking for someone who models plus do the texturing. And when I talk about texturing here, talk about the UVs, uh, creating the maps, etc, etc. So you're going to be asked sometimes uh, to do uh, modeling as well. So, um, you know, creature modeling, uh, props, um, and uh, 3D environment modeling as well. So this is for the texturing artist. Uh, Let's talk now about the look development artist. Now, once the texturing artist is going to create the textures, he's going to create the models or the assets, he's going to give them to the look development artist who's going to, based on those maps, is going to create shaders and materials. The look, um, uh, you know, um, again, I, want, I wanted to say just a quick note here, and go back to the look development artist, is that you're going to be working, you know, all the departments are going to be working under a supervision. So, um, you know, you're going to have a supervisor and this supervisor is going to uh, give you some tasks. So you're working as a team, if you like. You, know, you start with the textures. Every asset is going to pass from the textures, then look development, then to the lighting um, and compositing. Um, so let's go back to the look development here. The look development artist is going to be asked to do, um, you know, um, a cre a shader creation. Uh, materials uh, based on the concept, uh, you know, submitted by the um, um, uh, concept designer or the art director. So what are the things that you're responsible for? Um, you're responsible for shaders. So you have to know layered based uh, materials like, you know, you know, uh, combining or um, blending different kind of materials in order to find an end result that you're uh, re uh, looking for. Um, sometimes look development artists can do texturing as well. Um, and, you know, um, you know, you work in collaboration with a texturing artist. Um, if your boutiques or VFX boutique, their work that you're going to work for is having a texturing artist. 
If not, you're going to do it as a look development artist. So this is for the look development artist. Now let's talk about the lighting artist. A lighting artist is going to be, you know, after the look development is done, he's going to start doing the um, shots per shot or per sequence integration. Um, and he's going to creating, uh, create the, the, the lighting for the 3D environment that you're going to create or um, that, you know, the model are going to create. Or, you know, sometimes a lighter, um, you know, sometimes uh, he's going to be asked to do uh, photography, uh, it's your right photography for the for the set so that they have, you know, the reflection back again on those 3D models, you know, from the actual uh, environment that they have shot the footage. Um, so what are the tasks that a lighter can do? Sometimes they're going to be asked to do compositing. And by the way, I want to I want to point out here is that all those all those departments um, and um, this is what I noticed in the VFX boutiques nowadays is that they are asking for multi-pass compositing knowledge. It's a plus, but um, especially for the lighting artist, because a lighting artist is going to be sometimes asked to do compositing. Even a look development artist is going to be asked to do um, compositing because he's going to be responsible for creating, you know, the shaders for hair and fjord, um and for, um, you know, for cloth. Uh, skin shaders, etc. So if you have a, um, a multi-pass compositing knowledge, you're going to work with multiple passes in, in order to find, um, you know, a result. So just to go back to the lighting artist, a lighting artist is, he's going to be asked to do compositing as well. If he doesn't know about compositing, um, and, and I'm talking here about multi-pass compositing, they're going to teach you, um, especially if you are a VFX, a small VFX boutique. Okay. All right, just to recap. So we have three departments here we're talking about. We have the texturing artist who's going to create the maps. Um, he's going to be working hand in hand with the uh, look development artist to create the maps um, and under the supervision of sup supervisor. So um, sometimes they're gonna ask actually to create some HDR creation as well. So bear that in mind. Uh, you have the look development artist who create the shaders um, in the materials, uh, you know, using those kind of um, maps submitted by the texturing artist and the 3D models as well. So the look development artist is going to work on, you know, skin shaders, snow shaders, ocean shaders, maybe, um, hair and fjord, uh, cloth, um, those kind of materials that are, you know, you know, so you have also finally the lighting artist who's going to be asked to do um, lighting and also to do uh, compositing sometimes, especially um, if you are a VFX, a small VFX boutique, so they can't hire more people, so they're gonna ask you to do it. If they, if you don't know how to do it, they're gonna teach you. And um, yeah, uh, this is this is the three departments. Now let's talk about software. So I'm gonna talk about software and what I recommend as a software to start with. All right, when it comes to software, uh, if you're looking for in the film industry, you're going to find that the renders, the, the, the most used renders out there are Arnold. Now I'm talking about nowadays, Arnold, and there is uh, Renderman. Renderman and Arnold are the most used uh, in the film industry nowadays. So uh, I wanted to show you just uh, here, um, they actually just released, I don't know if yesterday or, or before that, anyways, just a day or two days ago at Seagraph 2016, they released, um, you know, Arnold for 3ds Max, which is the good news uh, since you're using 3ds Max. Um, so yeah, check it out. They have this amazing, amazing documentation explaining every single thing about the features. Um, I like it. So yeah, uh, Arnold for 3ds Max. Um, I'm looking at my notes. So. V-Ray, V-Ray, V-Ray. I highly recommend V-Ray. V-Ray is little by little becoming a standard. I love V-Ray. V-Ray has all the features that you're gonna need. You name it, you know, um, skin shaders. Anyways, you can create any materials, any materials you like. Um, you know, um, I've been using it for years and years. It's just, it never failed to deliver. <laughs> it's amazing. I highly recommend that you start with that. Um, when, it, when it comes to uh, texture painting or you creating UVs, I highly recommend UV layout to create the UVs. 
it makes the UVs a piece of cake. I got introduced to UV layout by Alex Arvers. I was watching one of his trainings and um, a long time ago. And he started using this um, 3D software that looks like uh, um, the UI, the user interface looks like this from the 60s, but it, it really like, it makes UVs um, a piece of cake. Just uh, type it in Google and, and search for it, UV layout. I'm gonna put it in the description as well. Now for the texture painting, there's body paint, which um, actually I never use body paint, but I just, you know, seen the demos online. Um, I'm a Photoshop user. I use Photoshop for, for texture creation. Of course, um, you know, you have to have strong skills in Photoshop. There's no doubt about that. But if you want to go to the next level, there is, um, you know, a package called from the foundry called Mary. Mary, Mary, highly recommend it. If you're going to be a look development, a texturing and look development artist, Mary is the deal. It's, it's, it supports, you can, you can cr create those incredible gigantic ma maps with a lot of channels and a lot of, and it, it just delivers, you know what I mean? So Mary. So yeah, to recap about the software, you have RenderMan, Arnold, and V-Ray as a renderer, and you have Mary and UV Layout. Uh, UV Layout for creating the UVs and Mary for um, creating the, you know, uh, texture painting, texture painting, texture creation, uh, creating the specular maps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and it supports 32 bit, um, if I'm not mistaken. Mary supports 32 bit, so you can export um, as an EXR, and you can have those kind of range and stuff. All right, let's talk now about the trainings. Let's talk about trainings. I have some great, great uh, training material for you, Ahmed. So for the training materials, um, I would recommend uh, three names to start with. There is, um, you know, uh, Justin Holt, who's a texturing um, uh, artist. And actually, let's look into his portfolio. So this is his uh, portfolio and it actually has a workshop and he has, uh, I think, two DVDs in Nomen, um, a Nomen workshop. So you can check him out as well. Um, he's, he's, he's a great inspiration for you if you're going to, to start working with this uh, or being a texturing and a look development artist. He's a look development artist and a texturing artist. So yeah, Justin Hall, check his um, his training material and study it. Um, a, a second um, training source I'm gonna recommend is Alex Alvarez. Alex Alvarez, um, he's been a huge inspiration for me when I started. Um, now he, the only thing that we have a difference is he's using Maya, I'm using 3ds Max. I hated Maya the first day I used it. <laughs> Just, but you know, the techniques are the same. If you're going to learn, to learn, try to learn a technique. Don't learn about this because, you know, 3D software are all the same. Uh, three uh, renders are all the same. Uh, anyway, 3D software are all the same. They, it's just a different methods to reach out a goal. That's it. But if you learn, um, you know, the technique or the pipeline, uh, you can pretty much apply to any 3D software they're going to use. Um, so yeah, Alex Alvaro's DVDs are just incredibly uh, amazing. Uh, it's well produced. And what I like about Alex is that he 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 knows how how to teach, how to really communicate his ideas, and how to really communicate, um, you know, the, the technique that he's uh, teaching you. Uh, he's just an amazing instructor. I highly recommend all his training materials, uh, whether in the texturing or in other fields. It's, he's just great. Alvarez will teach you about texturing, the whole thing actually, texturing, look development, compositing, um, 3D modeling as well in ZBrush. Um, even in Maya, since you said that's your work sometimes with Maya. So yeah, all these techniques can be applied to 3ds Max. Um, I'm assuming that you are a 3ds Max user, so. Um, so Alex Alvarez, man, Alex Alvarez, he's the deal. Now we're gonna move to UVs. UVs can be a pain sometimes, but if you're using UV layout, it's gonna be a piece of cake. Now, there is a training uh, from Noman Workshop by uh, Kevin Hudson. I hope I'm pronouncing the, the, the name uh, correctly. Uh, sorry, Kevin, if I'm not. <laughs> so Kevin Hansen, uh, Hudson, uh, it's called UV Mapping 101. Um, it's basically, he shows you uh, UV mapping in Maya. And there is also the advanced UV layout uh, for production by the same author, Kevin Hudson. 
um, and it's actually using uh, HIDAS UV layout, body paint, Maya and ZBrush. But you know, you're going to learn uh, UVs um, and uh, creating UVs for assets or for creatures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, highly, highly recommend those. Um, I'm gonna put all those links in the description. Um, so yeah, that's for the training materials. Uh, focus on those. You're gonna be the best. You're gonna be the best. The day when you supply for a job your reel is going to be the best. All right, so now let's talk about something very, very important. Let's talk about marketing. How do you market yourself? Um, I'm gonna share with you a technique that it's going to market your 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 um, your reel before even it's released. So I'm assuming that you're gonna work on a reel, right? So um, share, share what you know. While you're, you're studying, actually, you're figuring out something new or you're trying something or you created a texture, share your pipeline, share your techniques, share um, share the way you work. So your, your, um, your future employer, um, he's going to see how you work, uh, what is your pipeline. So you're going to sell that even before actually the reel is produced. Um, um, so share what you know, create some threads in forums and uh, try to receive feedback from uh, from from the industry. Um, so yeah, you're going to market yourself even before actually making the reel because this is this is the problem of and this is actually what I notice for a lot of reels uh, nowadays that the reel just show up, you know what I mean? Like out of nowhere, just show up, you know? So one thing that it's so powerful to understand is that people people notice consistency. They don't notice a news. They don't notice news. They notice consistency. If something is consistent, they notice it and they follow it. And they 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 um you know they follow it and they, they want to see the result, the end result. But if something that just came out a news, they're gonna see it and that's it, you know. So build your story with sharing what you know. You know, record yourself in uh, you know in a video sharing the technique that you just learned or a technique that you just um, um, you know discovered or how do you found some 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 solutions for some issues. Um, um, so yeah, this is this is really really powerful. To focus on it. Um, it will really um, you know market your reel before it's released. Um, I'll say 50% of the effort put it in the marketing and 50% put it on the hard work that you're going to put into re your reel and studying those training materials that I, I just uh, shared with you. So just to recap about marketing, share what you know and share your process. You're going to market uh, your, um, your expertise first and second with sharing your process you're going to market that you're someone who's organized someone who has a pipeline and someone who's going to be a good fit uh, for the job so yeah Ahmed I hope that this um, actually was helpful um, what can I say the ideas that I share today can be wrong sometimes uh, so yeah take the ideas that are going to be a fit for you and ignore the ideas that are not going to be of help so yeah um, so Good luck, and I can't wait to see your demo reel, actually. Um, please share with us once it's done and released. All right, so uh, good luck, and uh, you take care.